there was something really special that happened in that household when we were together, you know, with me being away from my girl while she was in Glasgow for the year. Um, just the connection that the three of us had there. I don't think there was ever any arguments or fights. We just, we got along so good. We got so close. And when we started doing music again, everything just came so natural and easy. And again, when Pedbull jumped in, it just, it just felt right and easy. So it just made sense to, to call the band 816. So Stand Down was a band that Sean and I started with a few other good friends from Cranbrook. Um, did a, two albums, a bunch of little mini tours and a bunch of shows. Um, super, super fun. Just kind of got our feet wet into the music industry. I met them at a Chevelle show at the Commodore and I remember meeting Justin first and he was really nice. Like, got, hey, how are you? And we, we hit it off really well. Sean was kind of like, yeah, how are you doing, bud? Cool, he had his, always had his harem of girls like he does, Sean. Um, and the first time we met was at Chevelle at the Commodore, I believe. Um, the only reason I know this is because it's in my notes from the guys. <laughs> that's, that's how much of a, a great first impression he made. <laughs> Anyway, I'm joking. We ended up not paying attention to three quarters of the show because we were chatting and getting along so well, so it just kind of fit perfectly. That was the beginning of our our, our music relationship and more importantly, our, our friendship. And we, bore, we formed a bond and we played for like five years together. We had some great shows. Until I think around 2010 and decided to take a little hiatus. So some of us kept on playing music, some of us took a, a little break for a while. So it was like 2018, and I was living in a house in Burnaby with a good friend of mine, Ken Burke, who recorded our album. Uh, he was about to have a second child with his family, and uh, I knew at that time it was like, time to move out. My fiance and I, Nick, we ended up living downtown for a little while, and we decided that she was going to get her master's, and that involved moving to Glasgow for a year. Justin couldn't afford the place that he was living in downtown. He asked me if I'd be interested in moving into Vancouver with him, and I was like, yeah. At the same time, our drummer, Sean, uh, was coming out of a relationship as well and was looking for a place to stay. We found this place in East Van, 81612. And just didn't like it. I loved it. I was like, this was my choice. Sean had a broken ankle and couldn't even come walk and check it out. He just trusted us. The three of us decided to uh, move into the 40-year-old bachelor pad known as 816 East 12. And we were all a little worried at first, but we bonded the first couple days that we were here. We bonded like you've never seen before, like a couple fucking 20 something year old bachelors. From day one on, it was just the best. It was amazing. It was like, we called it the 40 year old frat house because we're all in our forties, but but it was just the best time. We, we didn't, you know, we didn't fight. We didn't bicker. We didn't, it was none of that stuff. It was just fun the whole time. It was great. Um, they got me through. It was a pretty tough time. I was still, like, I could barely move when I moved in here. It was, it was great for all three of us to be together again. You know, Painter and I had a couple little jam sessions once or twice, Sean and I the same, but took a took a few months before the three of us actually got together and, and got it started. Uh, you know, Sean set up his electric trump kit in the kitchen, and uh, we just started playing. And it was originally a New Year's Day, and Justin and Sean started playing, and I was asleep. And I woke up to take a piss and saw them. I'm like, they're playing old Stan Down songs. And I was like, you fucking idiots. I'm like, cool. And they kind of joked and it's like, oh yeah, we're two piece chicken. I think there was a, a Lamb of God video where Willie Adler had a tattoo on his stomach of, uh, they were called him One Piece Willie because he had a tattoo of One Piece Chicken and that was his favorite meal. Um, Sean and I thought that was funny. So we decided to call ourselves Two Piece Chicken when we were jamming. I mean, we did a lot of jamming on our own before we recorded a lot of that stuff. But on the road, we would end up finding ourselves just jamming at parties or after shows or whatever. And we named, the two of us were Two Piece Chicken. And then when we moved into the Painter, uh, we became Three Piece Chicken. Then I joined, it was Three Piece Chicken. It's just a joke we had. Chicken. 
and it was hot out, so we were like, we took all our gear outside onto the uh, patio of 816. Uh, Sean's drum kit, all our bass, and we hooked up into headphones so we could all hear each other. And I'm sure the neighbors thought we were fucking crazy. Anybody out walking around couldn't hear anything except for Sean hitting his pads. Got a few songs under our belt, and then we needed to get a vocalist. So Painter and I had talked quite a while uh, that we were interested in bringing this guy known as Brad Pedwell in to do a song or two here or there. We always loved his, um, his type of singing, his voice, and from what I remember, I didn't know him too well, but I always liked his attitude. I immediately thought of my friend Brad Pedwell, who I'd known over the years. He played shows with his bands at Stand Now. I'd seen his solo stuff, and I was always a big fan. And through friends, we eventually met. And so Pedal and I always joked like, yeah, we should, we could joke, but we were like, we should start a band together, we should start some music. And we talked about this probably for a couple of years, nothing really happened. And I remember talking to Justin and I was like, we should talk to Brad. We, we reached out to him to see if it was something that he was into. And, you know, we had a little iPad recording with GarageBand of a song that we uh, first did called Down. Uh, just said, hey man, here's a song we wrote, what do you think? Uh, can you write some lyrics for it? And that day, I listened to it, and I was like, fuck yeah! And so I just wrote to it and recorded it and sent it back the same day, pretty much. Literally, I'm not even kidding you, a day later, 24 hours later, we all get an email from Brad. He's recorded vocals for now. Overnight, he recorded it and sent it back the next day, and that's when we're like, yeah, this is the guy. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. I see that look in your eye. Secrets you keep by the spot. Scratch down my back like a lioness. Just open up. We did a hangout, and it just happened to be that he lived about a block away from 816. So everything just kept checking the box that was perfect. He came to hang out, exactly the same goofy attitude as us. Um, other than he liked wrestling, but that made Painter feel a little bit better. <laughs> I was like, this is our fucking guy. This, this is it. Like, is there any argument? I talked to Justin, I talked to Sean, they were all like, holy, we've never had a singer respond so quickly with vocals that are that good. It just all clicked and it all went really, really fluidly. We all, I remember we went to, on our bikes and did a brewery tour, uh, the four of us, and we just all just kind of bonded and like, Padwell just, he got it. He got along with us. He was one of us. He was like, he was the guy. There was no argument past that point. They invited me to come jam with them in the 816, in the kitchen, on the patio. And then so when Pedwell joined, we're like, well, naturally, we're a four piece chicken. So we were a four piece chicken. Four piece chicken. Four piece chicken. 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 kept going for a little while and it came to a point where Pedwell was having a rough spell. Um, I think he'd split with his girlfriend at the time. It was in the middle of COVID where everything was getting, uh, you know, nobody knew what was going on in the world. It was a dark time for a lot of people. I took the COVID-19 pandemic very poorly. Pedwell seemed a little distant at times. I wasn't coming out to jams anymore. I uh, wasn't really responding to us. And we knew, like, being that he was a live musician, his career was hit really hard, probably harder than most of us. Uh, he ended up falling and breaking his leg really bad, and it put him into a really dark space for a while. And around that time, man, I got so low and so down about myself and my life that I just stopped showing up to jams, man. I stopped responding when they'd ask me what's going on, which is not okay. He kind of distanced himself from everybody, so we took a little break and we hadn't heard from him in a while. And We're trying to be supportive and we're reaching out to him 
and he wasn't really responding, and uh, it became really hard. We really questioned, what are we, what are we, what are we gonna do? And they were just, hey man, we just want to know that you're okay. Could you at least tell us either way? And I would mostly ghost them, man. I was, I was fucking so depressed and so sad and so living in my own head that I wasn't thinking about anybody else. And so I just stopped, stopped trying, stopped working, stopped, stopped everything. For good or bad, we started talking about, hey, maybe some of these songs would be good for stand now. We started thinking, should we revive stand now? Because I didn't give them any reason to believe that I was sticking around, that they should even give a shit about me anymore, because it's like, well, Pedwell doesn't even answer our phone calls. What do we want to do with our songs? Are we going to split it up? Get multiple singers. We didn't know. We were thinking about a lot of things during that time. So we wound up having this video call one night. And he started with apologizing, saying he was been aloof and uh, he'd been going through shit, which was understandable. And we were trying to be supportive and everything, and we knew. But then he was totally in, and he was in, and he was down to start doing it again. We were thinking about maybe getting other singers to do songs and have him still do some songs. Maybe do stand out shit. They were going to go a different direction. I wasn't going to be there. Their singer. I could tell Pedwell right away did not like that idea. I didn't take that well. Despite it being my fault, I didn't take it well. Shortly after Justin called, Sean and I and said, Pedwell's out. I was like, what? He said, yeah, he just texted us saying, yeah, he doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. And we were like, is it because of what we said? And he's like, I, I think so. And we kind of felt like he fucking self destructed it. He was going to be just a little piece of it. He wasn't going to be a full part of it anymore. And I, I get it. I get why I was pissed. And why he left. So with Pedwell taking a little hiatus and gone from the, I guess the band at the time, the, yeah, the three of us just kept kept going and rehearsing. We, I had a rehearsal space with one of my other bands, so we ended up just moving in there. And Justin was playing bass in a band called The Outlaw. Um, and they were looking for jam space too, and so he found a place in the US, um, right by the old Army and Navy building. So we ended up just moving in there and continuing to go, uh, continuing to work on the songs, fine tune them, just having fun, fun jamming, playing music. We got something really special there, but the songs weren't ready yet. We basically had about 10 songs, I think, down. I had a little studio at home uh, that I was able to not waste anybody's time and try a whole bunch of ideas and fine tune. And then, then it came to the point where we really had the songs feeling really, really good and we needed to make a decision. We needed to figure out what we were gonna do for vocals. So the more we talked about it, and especially with Ken's input as well, uh, we ended up uh, reaching out to Pedwell again and having a good conversation and... And we hashed it out, man. And they apologized, I apologized. We got back on the level together. Again, he was in a better headspace. Um, everything just lined up again. It's, I think that's been the, the continuous thing that kept going with this, is everything just ended up, ended up lining up perfectly at the right time. And I'm so grateful that they invited me back into their crew after I abandoned them. The guys in 816 never abandoned me. I abandoned them. And I'm really fucking grateful that they were willing to open their arms back open again, like Creed, <laughs> and welcome me back into their group. So he came back on board. And we were four-piece chicken once again. Four-piece chicken that was about to realize that they're actually 816. We started working, going to the jam spaces together with all of us, and it was just easy. I'm coming down with the coronavirus. <laughs> we played that song last weekend or weekend before. It was fun, but with you singing, it was fucking like you set the tempo and everything. It was perfect. 
Fast forward to the future, we had our songs ready to record. Um, we reached out to Ken Burke, who's uh, again an amazing friend, and he was willing to help us out to, to capture our ideas. So we went to Hipposonic to do our drums. Okay, well when we get uh, the stuff in there, I'll give you a shout and then we'll uh, figure it out from there. Okay, come soon, man. There's the man, there he is. The beat doctor himself. Beat doctor? <laughs> <laughs> the crew that we had, man, Dan Barisi, Kelly Stadola, Ken Burke behind the board, it made the entire time at the studio like being at summer camp. It felt like being with your friends in a safe environment where you can be yourself and have a good time and make some good fucking rock and roll. Kelly Stadola, a fucking absolute beauty. How am I supposed to grease up my four-piece chicken? <laughs> right? Sean wanted uh, someone to be there the whole time with him, and it turned out to be fucking magic because Kelly was so good. We can, you could actually even use the last fill and punch in one little part, yeah. and you'd have your tape. Okay. But you know, I think a couple more. I'd yeah, yeah. Got me over yeah. It, so. Okay, thanks. Okay. Man. It sounded really good. Yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Sweet. Try that for uh, 16 floor again. Thank God Kelly knows what he's doing. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, Sean banged through all the songs. Hey, what do you guys, do you guys like the intro? I know it's a, just simple shit that we're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's been feeling really good. I've been... Yeah. I've been concentrating on me staying with the click that yeah. I haven't been paying attention yeah, to. Yeah, I like doing like the initiatives, the simplicity. But the reason I think it's all, everything's feeling good, I think it's because you're playing it great. <laughs> Alrighty then. I like it. That was nice. I mean, I probably had a couple more tall cans than I needed last night. Uh -huh. That's fair. Hey. What I have right now, I have a shit ton, well not a shit ton, but some editing to do. Yeah. And it's probably better if you get a complete tape. And if, we, if we're not getting anything better, I'll just say, okay, well, I'll go back yeah. to my edit. I'm pretty exhausted, but... Uh, but um, you got one more in you for the colonel, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> crush, one, crush one for the colonel! Uh, and we had all of our scratch tracks and everything as well there. Pedwell was there that day and unwillingly and unknowingly we set him up with a vocal mic so that we could at least get some scratch tracks. I didn't actually know I was going to be singing, so... I was going to be dead to me, I was going to be dead to me, you were what I said. Now I'm coming down. Woo! Finally to be recording these songs. It felt like such a fucking challenge to finally get here, but we were finally here. What are you doing right now? Um, I want to start playing, but I think they're talking about the government or something <laughs> in there. I don't know. We just got a bunch of chicken. It's delicious. Chicken. Hello, my name is Justin. What's your name? Here come the burgers and the crinkle cut fries. It's the crinkle cut fries. My back! Oh, do you want me to help you? Oh, oh man! <laughs> what? Where'd you go? Is that a piece of chicken? What? Dude, it's, that's a cave. Dude, I thought it was fried chicken. It's a fucking cave. <laughs> what a wonderful time we've had here. Right here. This will always be remembered. That's the place we had our chicken dinner. Chicken. I'm leaving Hipposonic now. It's like leaving summer camp. You made so many friends that meant so much to you. Now it's just time to go home to reality. Cool. 
when we went to studio, we were still under the name Four Piece Chicken and we ran with it for a while, but when things started to come down where we were recording, starting to figure out that, hey, we were doing something special. Um, the talk was, do we keep the name Four Piece Chicken or not? And some of us wanted to keep it, some of us didn't. We were, we were stoked on the name. It's, you know, it's goofy or whatever, but eventually we, we came to realize, at least a couple of us, we came to realize that we thought maybe what we were doing was a little bit more, it was a little bit beyond that name. So we thought, okay, other than Four Piece Chicken, what is the heart and soul of this act? And we always kept coming back to 816. We all decided that it was going to be 816. 816 was born because it just made sense. That was the place where we all got together. That's where all the music happened, all the jams. It was just, there was something really special that happened in that household. We became a band in 816. Then we went to Ken's house to record the bass and the guitars. For the record, I was really hoping he'd use the one where the headline goes, Justin is a drug dealer! <laughs> <laughs> played with some new some new gear that I'd had over the years and I was really really excited to really capture the guitar tone that uh, I'd had in the in the jam space and everything with um, and it's with the newer gear that I'd gone to nice. <laughs> uh, with their little studio here at my house, uh, I was able to play around with a bunch of overdubs and uh, just play around with different ideas to dub in keys and synthesizers, everything like that just to play around. Ken was nice enough to lend me some of his recording gear, so I took his preamp and SM7B and recorded my vocals actually in my den at home. I recorded so many goddamn vocal tracks for this album and we wound up pulling more out than we left in. There was there was options after options after options. Yes, we're finally doing it. We're finally here. Like after all the shit we've gone through, like we're here. We're finally doing it. It felt right. It was perfect. I remember like just hearing Pedwell's fucking scratch tracks to certain songs like Let It Be Known was the biggest one for me that's standing out here in his chorus. And I was like, oh my god, I can't fucking wait to hear this song finished because wow. And I started to realize, wow, these are pretty fucking good batch of songs we got here. And so we started playing. We booked our first show. Our friend Cobra Moan, she owned a, a sandwich bar restaurant called Side Hustle. A place called Side Hustle Sandwiches, just off Main Street, Main, 7th and Main. Side Hustle Sandwiches, rest in peace and she was looking to put on a concert on the street, so she asked if uh, we'd be into it, and obviously we were, because it'd been a long time since some of us had played shows. Sean hadn't played since probably like 2011, the old stand down days. We came out, we opened with masks, and it just felt so amazing. <laughs> It 
was so much fun to get out there and be able to share with our friends, um, to share the tunes that we've been working on for probably like two years. I think it was about two years to that point. <laughs> It went way better than I could imagine. It just, it felt so good being up there with the boys and, and Pedwell just like nailed everything. Um, it just felt great. And I remember like we didn't play Dead to Me on that set, but we had it on the end of our set just in case. And uh, when we were finishing up, Justin's like, are we gonna play Dead to Me? And Pedwell's like, fuck no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I feel the same way. I was so gassed. I was like, Fuck, where's the fucking defibrillator? We got introduced to our friend Tim Creviston. He's the one that mixed our album, and it was just mind blowing what he did to bring the songs to life. You, you got a metal album or hard rock album, this guy you go to. Yeah, Tim Creviston did such a great job. Shout out to Tim Creviston. When I first heard the, the, the first mixes of the album, uh, not gonna lie, brought tears to my eyes. The first song uh, was Fall, which is gonna be our first single. Special, special moment. We were really hoping to have everything released before Christmas of um, Christmas of 2022. Uh, we were getting ready to shoot a music video as well. I fucking know. I'll never forget the day. I got a text in our WhatsApp group from Justin. I was traveling to work and I had another car that blew a stop sign and I ended up being in a, a bad accident. I ended up T-boning this car and then going straight into a I cement barricade. Uh, the time of the accident, it was like six in the morning. I was pretty rung up and pretty hurt. My car was smashed the front end, basically up to the tire well. It turned out that I ended up having a multiple broken ribs and fractured vertebrae wings, bruised lung. I was, I was pretty hurting. It was uh, probably the most pain I think I've ever been in. Nothing really mattered anymore. It was like, uh, we had this big video out release and I was just like, I don't care because my f best friend almost died. Wow, it was a big kind of come to realization moment for me. I was like, I almost lost my best friend. And I would not know what to do, I still think to this day. Wow. Um, what I'd do if, if we lost chess that day. And at that point, we had the warehouse booked. We had an awesome videographer ready to shoot our video. And we couldn't do it because Justin couldn't even really hold a guitar around his neck. Nothing that mattered anymore other than Justin getting better. That's all that mattered to us. So everything kind of got put on hold as it came to mixing and uh, I went into recovery mode. And that guy played a gig like two weeks later, like a crushing metal show, playing bass with his heavy ass bass around his back, man, with broken ribs. What resilience that he showed to do that, you know what I mean? Shortly after that, uh, I was able to at least stand at rehearsals for a short period of time to start digging back in and start rehearsing again. So I think it was just before Christmas, we ended up getting, uh, I think our single, or what might be our single, mixed and back to us first as the first mix. And again, same thing, we were just blown away at how much life he brought to these songs. Everybody was just, so happy and we now finally have all the songs fully mixed fully mastered uh, it's been a long time long time in the making to uh, to get where we are right now with this album and just the whole album sounds great um, everybody did a great job now the hard part is trying to choose a single because we're so happy with so many of the songs every group every adult every band they have their problems but in our case our problems, right now at least, they're good problems. They're, what song's gonna be the single because we have so many awesome songs? It's, what are we gonna do next? And it's exciting. You know, the number 816 was just, that's home and that was family and that's what meant everything to us. And I think that was really important with this band. It's where all the music happened, all the jams. It was just, there was something really special that happened in that household when we were together. The measure of a band and the measure of real friends it's what you can overcome and how you act in those dark times by loving one another and being excited when you see one another giving each other a hug shotgunning a beer with your friend 
816 to me is the mindset of feeling comfortable. Home. Not necessarily an address of home. The mindset of home. And a feeling that with these guys, I can't fail. Because we got each other. And we've proven that we can overcome things together. This is our band moving forward. And we're gonna fucking crush it and take on the world. Chicken.